Witam Państwa serdecznie, Błażej Hrabkowicz, 30. edycja Festiwalu Energa Camera Image w Toruniu and our guests are the recipient of uh, the special award for production design, Sarah Greenwood. Hello. Hello. And of course, this award is not only for you because no production designer would be complete without <laughs> set decorator Katie Spencer. So nice to, nice to have you here, Katie, also, uh, because this, this award is truly for the both of you. And I, I'm glad we have this chance to talk about your work. But before we do that, just tell me, I know you have been here briefly, but what are your first impressions from Torun as a city? Ah, uh, well, we have just driven through, you know, and so we saw the old town as we were coming across the bridge. And uh, as, as uh, designers, we love looking at you know, old towns, and we love looking at anything actually, but it's really interesting, it's kind of like, we call it a busman's holiday, so where do you go on holiday? Oh, you go to nice old places and look at old buildings, <laughs> because yeah, we love it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true, and I think the testament of some ways that you, you want to come back, yeah. you want to spend more time there, yeah. and I think that's definitely what we have in the short space we've arrived, yeah. it's like, well, we need to spend more time here, yeah. and not just... And this is our first visit. time in Poland as well, yeah. so thank you very much for well, inviting mm. us. Happy to have you here. But you already mentioned something really interesting. We like to look at anything, yeah. basically. And the, am I correct in assuming that the, the bulk of the, of, jo of the work, of a job of production designer, set decorator, is looking at things and places and having a neat eye for detail? Well, interestingly, detail is where you particularly come in. But, you know, I think it's... Um, I think it's true and I think, you know, people say, oh, you know, do you just do period films or do you do fancy, or do you do this, do you do that? You do, you, we do anything, but also it's like nothing is one period. Do you know what I mean? None of us live in 2022. We live, well, we live in 2022 way back, you know, and, and before, you know, our houses are full of things. It might be an old house we live in, might be this, might be that. So it's a character, it's totally character driven. You know, and that's, that's what I would say about, that is it? exactly yeah. where we come yeah. from, from, you know, you take this, this amazing town we're here and it's whatever story you set in that town, yeah. whatever character, and it could be contemporary, it could be a hundred years ago, yeah. it, you know, it could be 400 years ago, yeah. but it's the character that drives you through and the script and the narrative, I mm. think. And, it's, and it's interesting, you know, when you, you know, I mean, obviously we do films that are totally built, you build everything, but you know, your research is kind of like, it's kind of this kind of, gathering and harvesting all this information. But equally, you know, like at the moment we're working on a film that is almost like 95% location. And it's fascinating because you're, you're then making the locations talk to you, you know, and you're looking at something and, you know, it might just be this really small thing, like those two doors over there and the way they're, that they're set like that. And therefore, when you have people coming in, you know, so it's, it's kind of like you're looking for clues and keys and whatever. It's a very, you know, constantly, changing and kind of stimulating. Which is what makes it so fascinating, yeah. is it evolves, places evolve, stories yeah. evolve, and therefore the design evolves around it. Yeah. Really. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, coming here, I'll be fleetingly, you know, it's amazing because you kind of, and also seeing Poland, you know, and seeing, you know, as we were driving in from the airport, the beautiful light, the sunlight on all the, all the silver birch trees and the forests and things. And it's just like, wow, that is amazing. It's, it's so, very evocative. It's very evocative and so cinema cinematic. It's mm -hmm. so cinematic. And you just go, okay. And so, you know, it kind of feeds your information. You just put it away in your kind of mad library. Mm -hmm. And then you remember, you think, ah, now we saw this so-and-so, we saw that there, we, you know, and you know, we had a very real moment of that on Serrano that we did recently with Joe Wright and Seamus McGarvey was the DOP. Yeah. And, you know, we went to, we went to Noto in Sicily for a completely different film, for a completely different reason. And we only went to this town because they said, oh, these amazing cannoli uh, pastries. And we went there to eat the cannolis. And we ended up in this town that was so beautiful. And we just thought, ah. And I remember when we went back, we showed the pictures to Joe. And he said, right, when, when we make Serrano, we're going to make it there. Mm. And that's what happened. So now we know what Poland looks like for the eyes of production designer and set decorator. <laughs> so that is, that is great. But yeah. also, you mentioned research, of course. Yeah. And uh, it seems to me that the work of production designer and set decorator is um, part aesthetics, of course, and style and visuals, but also information, also knowledge. Is that correct? Yes. I think it's absolutely, <laughs> I think you have to, even if you want to disregard it, 
you know you need to know the certain time you need to know to then go away from it you know mm. you need to, to to have a basis of truth even if you then take yeah. and also it depends an awful lot on what type of film you're making if you're making something that is historically sort of accurate like when we did darkest hour which was the film about churchill it was important that certain facts were historically accurate to make the rest of the story live and then you can take liberties i think with environments you know, just little liberties that people still believe big, in it. Big liberties. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's kind of like a, it's like a sense of something, you know. And, f you know, the thing about Darkest Hour that was really interesting was certain things were absolutely spot on, like the graphics and the maps and the pins. Absolutely, you know, mm -hmm. our, our graphics team spent kind of days at the Imperial War Museum getting all the information. And then the whole atmosphere of it was something that was kind of built on how we wanted it to how we wanted it to feel and that was based based on the fact that it was so ad hoc when the when the british government went into the war they were so unprepared and it was held together with sticky tape and pins and you know like i mean it, I mean, really it was, was, it was you know. extraordinary there was the sort of the machine that was hitler's nazi regime which was so as you imagine, so organised everything. And then in our war rooms, it was like, we have somebody, can you bring a chair in from home? Yeah. It was literally that. And oh. so it was this make do and mend mentality. Yeah. But you talk, you talk about Doug Stow and how evocative it is. And I think that goes a lot to Bruno as well, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I mean, Bruno, Bruno Debanel, who was the DOP, DOP on that, yeah, yeah. Uh, who was an absolute joy to work with, you know, his, his sensibilities and his you know, the, the, the massive war room set we built that Joe wanted it to be like a maze and walls came in and went out and whatever. And Bruno absolutely kind of lent into the fact that the lighting, which is between, you, you know, it's very claustrophobic and this feeling of kind of oof like that, which it was literally in the basement underneath the war office, you know. So his lighting was very much led by all the lighting and shades that you brought to it you know so it was a kind of it was a kind of very evolving yeah. it's a collaborative nature isn't it because you sure. you, yeah. you you find that and that's the I, you know we've always talked about the collaborative nature of filmmaking is the yeah. best when everybody comes off, obviously led by the director yeah. and then filters down but you know that i mean i saw the darkest hour in its in its sort of just the big war scenes and its domestic scenes had that it had that sort of scratch and sniff sort of you felt. Yeah. That, you yeah. Know. But it was interesting because one of the first things that came to me was was you know you looking at two films that were set in in you know um, in the, the what was it, it was Val Valkyrie yeah. right Valkyrie and um, uh, Downfall right mm -hmm. so you watch those films and okay they are films as opposed to being but they represent the Nazi regime as this and cold and sharp and this and organized and the uniforms are immaculate and everything is organized and and what we were doing was absolutely opposite, the opposite, the opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know and tonally was the opposite in every way you know and that that kind of you know the whole look of it and feel of it you know and was which is the truth of it yeah. I mean I remember we did a, a, a film with Joe Right, called Atonement and meeting the Dunkirk veterans yeah. at Dunkirk and then saying, yes, they get, and they were still traumatized by what they went through. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, yes, they gave us the rifles, and it, this is the British government, but we were so early on in the war, they gave us the rifles, but the ammunition they gave us didn't fit the guns. Oh, that is uh, actually like something from Pink Panther or exactly. the Olsen Gang, but fortunately, uh, uh, well, it, it, we know there is the end result mm. of yeah. that. Mm. But uh, in terms of your process, your work process, uh, and the work process be between production designer and set decorator, is it a process where you as a production designer, ha you have, of course, with clo close collaboration with the director or director of photography, uh, you, you know, the, the vision, the concept for the design, and you sort of, as a set decorated, fill it in with your ideas in terms of details? I think, I think to, to yes, is the short answer yeah. to a set, that's exactly the essence of it, that, um, you know, Sarah, I mean, I want to talk for you, but you work so closely with the director and everything like that. And then 
you're the first on with the director mm -hmm. and then it's like it's it's the genesis of, of the ideas from the script and then maybe bringing in the novel if there was yeah. if it was from a novel and then it's fleshing it out yeah. more of the details and the characterizations and uh, yeah. I mean it, it's, inter it's interesting as well that you know most of the directors in fact all the directors we work with you know they absolutely love the fact that because we work in a way that is different from, say, the American system, where you have prop masters. We don't, we don't necessarily work like that, you know, so, so that all, everything of character and detail that is around the characters is done through, by, through, you, through, you know, through set it, deck, yeah. Through set deck. So it's, therefore, it is really controlled and really knowledge and really, you know, absolutely spot on. And that's what Katie certainly brings to... Um, you know, to play in come the day when we're shooting. Whereas, you know, what we what what you know, it's it is it's an evolving thing. It's an evolving thing. You know, and we work very closely. And you start broad, and you and it's that you know, and you find the point, and it's broad, and it's like that. And also, it depends on your director as well, and mm -hmm. and the and the DP. I mean, you know, because because everybody has a great idea, everybody has a terrible idea. You know, and they're all on the table, aren't yeah. they? Hopefully, if it's collaborative, and it's like. You know, I know Joe has said to me, oh, that was a terrible idea. Quite often. And we've said to Joe, well, that's, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> but, you, yeah, but you know, it's like that. Yeah. And then, okay, yes, that's yeah. a good thing. And then things evolve from there and things change yeah. and then they yeah. feed back into the script. Yeah. And that's the fun of it, I think. Yeah. From, from what I hear, you have a good relationship with Joe Wright, which is, you know, obvious, obvious in a way that you did a lot of films with him. And one last question for me is about my favorite film of Joe Wright, mm -hmm. and that is Hannah. Ah, yeah. I really, well, really love that one. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my question to you is about what were you aiming for uh, in the design of Hannah locations and what was the feel uh, you, were, you, you were going for with Joe Wright? Okay, that is a very interesting question because um, when we first did it, uh, the script we read, and, and I don't remember if it was a treatment or a script or Joe just saying it, and he said, it's like a fairy tale. And, it is. And yeah. that was the thing that I just thought, that's amazing, right? And, and the, in the first draft, and it, you know, there was all sorts of hands, Christian Anson, and I just thought, this is a fairy tale. It is a very dark fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Very like dark. Grim Brothers, tale. for example. And absolutely. But then, you know, the script went through its studio phases and came out, and it was like, I said, Joe, where's the fairy tale? And he said, okay, it's gone. They've taken it out, but we put it back in without mm -hmm. any knowledge to them. Mm -hmm. So we. Just, you know, and so, you know, so the, the, her... Tricking the system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. It was the only way, you know, and therefore, you know, it's like her house in the woods was the same shape as the house we built on the Spree Park in Berlin, and the wolf and Kate Blanchett's character oh, was yeah. a witch. She was the witch, she, she wore was, the green and shoes. And everything is based yeah. on Katie because Katie has red hair. And I'm always Joe's <laughs> villain. <laughs> she's the villain. <laughs> and and a so blueprint Joe, for a villain. Yeah, 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 she yeah. is the yeah. blueprint for Joe's villains. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. She's, so, so Kate Blanchett was like the villain. That's quite an honour. And yeah. it was like, the, you know, I can't, there's, there were these shoes she's wearing and yeah. they, they were like red shoes with green tights. But I things. love that you like Hannah because I think it's like an unsung. I yeah. mean, I think it's great. And you're about the third person this week yeah. who has said, oh, I really like Hannah. Yeah. Yeah, Hannah's. So, Hannah was yeah, a great yeah, film. It yeah, was a great film. Yeah. It is a great film. It's, so. yeah, the, the dark fairy tale combined with a thriller works really, really well in Hannah. Thank you very much, Sarah and Katie, for being yes. with us. So, Thank you. So nice to be here. Thank you. It's nice having you here. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>